East Lothian, Edinburgh's coast and countryside has so much to offer. With 40 miles of stunning coastline and gentle rolling landscapes, it's the perfect place to relax and enjoy the great outdoors. Hello, I'm Fat, and in this travel podcast series, I'll be chatting to the experts to help you discover the hidden gems, the finest food and drinks, and the coastal treasures. Plus, we'll be stepping back in time to hear about the historical wonders right here in East Lothian. Welcome to the Visit East Lothian podcast. Now, in this episode, I'm joined by Dr. Aaron Johnston, an expert in Scottish history and just an all-round very cool fella. Aaron, hello, how are you? Hello, I'm very well. Good to be here. Thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. Tell me about your passion for Scottish history and when it began and why it began and where where did it come from? Oh, well, I, I think like a lot of historians, uh, I couldn't put a day on when it began. I've, I seem to have always had it. But I remember growing up being told uh, stories about uh, Jacobite soldiers sleeping in the schoolyards where I was uh, being taught and, and all those local stories that just feed into your imagination when you're a kid. Uh, and uh, I've just uh, carried it with me forever. And what's so special about East Lothian in particular when it comes to Scottish history? Because it's steeped in it, isn't it? Ah, uh, Yeah, it really is. I mean, I, I, I'm an incomer here, really, but I mean, I was drawn to it just by... This amazing combination of, of coast and countryside that uh, that is so close to the capital, which means that uh, so much history has happened in and around this this area that it's 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 here, it's visible, it's all around. Uh, and if you're interested, like I am, in, in military studies and battlefields, then it, it's it's all right here in front of us. So uh, so that that uh, really is. Uh, a great place to to be if you've got that historical and heritage interest, and you know we've got some pretty iconic spots here, uh, so uh, so it's a great place to be able to talk about. Absolutely, yes, Lee. But you mentioned battlefield. Now you're a battlefield historian. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, that's right. I really uh, specialise in trying to unpick the experiences of uh, of being at war in uh, in historical periods, uh, mainly uh, before the the nineteenth century. So uh, so right back to to Roman days. But also, uh, my particular specialism is in the sixteen hundreds and the seventeen hundreds. That's incredible. You've argued that East Lothian is Scotland's battle county. Why? Why, why is that? Yeah, well, I think it's uh, it, it's a very good case. I reckon the uh, essentially uh, we're on the east Clo- east coast invasion route into Scotland. So, if an army wants to come into Scotland uh, in the um, late medieval period, for example, then the best way to do it is to come up through East Lothian. It's a uh, a rich, populous county, good for feeding troops. You've got the sea on one side, so if you've got uh, some ships to uh, to speed things along for your own supply, wagons and so on, uh, then that helps too. And of course, it's uh, the closest uh, route between the uh, the English border in the east and, and the Scottish capital, so it makes a, a campaign nice and short. All of that means that there's been lots and lots of, uh, of, uh, of armies coming through East Lothian. And of course, it also means that there's been a lot of people who lived here building forts and castles for generations to try and stop people coming through here. So there's a, there's a lot of history based here. Tell us about some of those famous battles then. Yeah, well, I mean, East Lothian's uh, got a high concentration of what are designated by the Scottish government as, uh, as nationally significant battlefields. We've got two in Dunbar, um, there's the biggest battle ever fought in Scotland over at uh, Musselburgh near Pinky Clue. And we've got the, the famous Body Prince Charlie's battlefield at, at Preston Pans. Uh, so some really big hitters on the national and, and international stage there. And then there's lots of other uh, smaller stuff as well. You know, some of the, there's one of the longest sieges in Scottish history here in East Lothian. Uh, there's a battlefield uh, at Carberry Hill uh, where nobody even got killed. So a sort of uh, an unusual battle. Uh, but essentially the, what it comes down to is we've got battles from the, the 9th century, the 13th, the 16th, the 17th, the 18th. Even the 20th century, we've got dogfights happening of some of the first aircraft shot down over Britain, uh, over East Lothian in the Second World War. So if you're interested in uh, in the history of, uh, of warfare, you can see that whole evolution just by coming to East Lothian. Absolutely. Well, it really is. I mean, do you know what? You, you, you hear the words East Lothian and you just don't realise how much history uh, there actually is in that in that little kind of nook and cranny of Scotland. It's, it's absolutely wonderful stuff. Now, you specialise in battle reenactment. So tell us more about that and what's involved in something like that. Yeah, well, I do this uh, both as a, as a hobby and, uh, and, and as part of my work in trying to uh, promote battlefield history and get other people as interested in it as I am. 
Uh, and essentially what it comes down to is trying to bring the stories that are in the textbooks uh, to life. And we want people to, to be able to visualize and to imagine and to comprehend uh, some of these, uh, some of these uh, events that actually took place you know, right on their doorsteps. So it's about uh, putting on events, uh, bringing people together. Uh, and we do this with volunteers from, from all over the country. Uh, and they get kitted up in the the arms and armor and clothing of the uh, of the the period, whatever period it might be. And I've done things in East Lothian from uh, from the second century all the way through to 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 the eighteenth. And it's really about recreating the sights and the sounds and the smells and 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 getting people to uh, to imagine just for just for a couple of hours on their Saturday afternoon what it might have been like living here uh, a few hundred years ago. And it's a very a very powerful way of telling stories. It's also a great way of getting people to engage with their their local heritage. You, you've now uh, piqued my curiosity. What what are the smells like? <laughs> well, if you're if you're doing a period that uh, that uses muskets and uh, and gunpowder, uh, then you very quickly learn that uh, the powder smoke on the battlefield, the, the the thick smoke that would have obscured visibility for the soldiers and dries the lips of the soldiers, it smells because of the sulphur. It stinks like rotten eggs, uh, and so it's one of the things you might not expect on a battlefield. But uh, this acrid, um, uh, eggy powder smoke uh, drifting across the field. Wow. Now, we're, we're in East Lothian. Great to hear about the history. If we wanted to see it and kind of feel it, you know, where would we go? There's loads of castles and forts, aren't there? Yeah, there are. And, and uh, these, uh, these basically take up the, the, the same time periods as the, as the big military campaigns. You, there's, a, there's an amazing uh, uh, hill fort with earth, earthen banks, uh, concentric circles of banks, very evocative site at, at Chester's, right in the centre of the county. And then you've got some of, some of Scotland's most iconic um, castles, um, the, the, the great coastal castle at Tantallon, sitting on its cliff top with its huge um, fronting wall and towers. And beautifully framing uh, the Bass Rock sitting off the coast there as well. Um, and there's smaller smaller ones as well. One of my favourites, and my kids love it as well, is, is Hales Castle tucked in on the River Tyne, lovely riverside location. It feels sometimes like it's our little hidden castle that uh, nobody else knows about. And that uh, uh, we, we love being able to just immerse ourselves in those stories. And, and what's the link to Mary, Queen of Scots? Tell us about that. Oh, well, obviously, uh, Queen Mary is one of the most iconic uh, characters in Scottish history. She's recognised all around the world. And, and you can track so much of her story here in East Lothian. Uh, I mean, a good example, I mean, uh, here where I'm sitting in, in, in Dunbar, just at the, the ruins of the castle in our harbour, um, is uh, uh, where she, she came when she was first uh, marrying her third husband. All of her marriages were fraught with uh, political and military consequences. And we've got two sites here in Islothian, uh, 20 years apart in the events that took place there, but only uh, a mile or so apart geographically at Pinky Clue. A huge battle in 1547, which Queen Mary wasn't at. She was only a, a toddler at the time. But it was basically two huge armies fighting over who was going to marry uh, the infant queen. And then 20 years later, she stood at the top of Carberry Hill uh, at the head of her own army, uh, about to surrender her crown and abdicate uh, in a battle caused by who she'd chosen herself to marry for her third husband. Uh, so this huge uh, uh, range of events, all of which was uh, was being played out across the county here. Now, the thing that fascinates me the most, and I don't know why this is the one that's interesting me the most, but the saltire, um, the birth of the saltire took place in East Lothian. I mean, that's the most iconic Scottish symbol of them all. Yeah, it's quite a great claim to be able to make, isn't it? The uh, The story goes that it, uh, it took place at a, a village called Athelston Ford, uh, and uh, it's a lo lovely little spot, a uh, very pleasant village indeed, and hard to imagine it uh, as, as the site of a, a bloody uh, battle in the uh, in the 800s. Uh, but uh, legend says that in around 832, uh, and at that time East Lothian was actually part of, uh, of a Northumbrian kingdom, so it was outside Scotland then. Uh, but there was a battle there between the Picts and the Scots on one side and the, the Angles, the Northumbrians, on the, on, on the other. And uh, the king of the Picts, he uh, thought he was in a bit of a, a sticky wicket. He was going to get defeated. Uh, so he made a prayer uh, and he saw a vision. He saw a vision of St. Andrew. Some say he saw the, uh, the St. Andrew's cross appear in the sky above. And uh, he made a vow that if he won the battle, uh, then he would uh, make uh, uh, St. Andrew the patron saint of, of the nation. So inspired by this vision, uh, out he goes, leads his men to a, to a glorious victory. He slays the, 
the enemy leader, whose name was, was uh, reputedly Athelstan, uh, as he tried to escape over a ford, hence the village of Athelstan's ford. And, uh, and uh, after that point, St. Andrew was the most important saint uh, in the Scottish lands. It's a great story, isn't it? Uh, I wish that as historians, we were able to prove a bit more of it. Oh, but so is that is that disputed then, Aaron? It's it, it's it's from a period of time where uh, quite a lot of stuff is disputed, uh, but it's a very old and established story. It uh, it's told to us by medieval chroniclers, uh, and and by some that were based in East Lothian. So if they didn't know the origin of, of the name Athelstan Ford, then nobody did. So uh, so it's a great uh, folk memory, and uh, and a great a great sort of origin myth for the for the saltire. And there's a, a, a heritage centre, great heritage centre um, at Athelstan um, Athelstan Ford Church. Uh, that's well worth a visit. And now, fast forward uh, a couple of years, East Lothian uh, has a really strong industrial heritage as well, doesn't it? It does, and you actually don't need to fast forward that that far. <laughs> there's uh, there's uh, uh, early evidence of, of coal working, for example, uh, uh, in, in East Lothian. Uh, the, the monks uh, in the early medieval period were very keen to start exploiting that. Uh, and then uh, over in the... Uh, Aaron, Aaron the, can, can you just tell me, when yeah. you say monk, that, what, what do you mean? What, is a Scot- what does a Scottish monk look like? Uh, well, very, very much like any other monk uh, that you would see in it. Uh, we're talking about the uh, the early medieval period, the, the big monastic settlements. Uh, the nearest one to, to us here would have been over in, um, there was monastic establishments uh, in, in the county themselves. There was a big, powerful one at New Battle just outside. Uh, and uh, and big um, at Haddington, the, the, the uh, religious settlements were very significant with a big abbey there. Um, so, so these these were um, not just uh, religious orders in the sense that they spent all their days praying. They were also uh, agricultural improvers and industrialists, and and they they changed the landscape, they worked the landscape, and uh, and uh, and improved the resources. So a lot of communities depended on these monastic settlements, and uh, and, and they started exploiting the the coal, the coal mines in the county. Um, that uh, after the Reformation, uh, then uh, change hands, become secular operations and so on. And that's really, um, uh, so Scotland's uh, industrial revolution is, is starting um, pretty much here in East Lothian, you might argue. That, I mean, it, it, you're saying that the Scotland's industrial heritage, kind of the, the nucleus of it was East Lothian. That's incredible. Well, you take an example. I mean, we, you know, it feels very much like a, a rural county, uh, agricultural county now. But I mean, uh, the, the mining operations until the 20th century were very significant, especially in the, uh, the west of the county. And there's Preston Grange Industrial Heritage uh, Park over uh, near Preston Pans that's evidence to that, where there was not only the coal mining, but all of the things that were associated with it, all the things that piggybacked on the, the big mining operations like potteries and glass uh, works and uh, and uh, and then um, just along the coast, at Preston Pans itself, the, the very word Preston Pans, it's the, uh, the salt pans run by the priest's town. Uh, uh, so, uh, so they were using the coal to boil up the seawater to create salt, uh, which then could be sold off at high prices. Uh, and and yeah, you know, there's uh, in the 1720s, as early as that, Scotland's first railway line going in in East Lothian, uh, a horse-drawn and gravity-drawn uh, wagonway that took coal from Trenent down to the the salt works at Kakenzie and Preston Pans. Uh, so that's really really early um, modernising uh, industrial pioneering. So now, what landmarks can we visit um, in in this nook of the world? You've mentioned Preston Grange. Uh, there's a brewing uh, kind of culture that continues there, isn't there? Yeah, as I say, there's Preston Preston Grange that really um, is a is a great place to go to uh, to explore some of the uh, industrial heritage. There's a, a fantastic 19th century big um, uh, pumping beam engine there. To, that, so all about how they could mine close to the to the sea without uh, without the mines flooding by pumping all of that water out. Um, then there's uh, there's a, a little independent heritage museum for the for that uh, historic wagon way at Kakenzie that I mentioned. That's a, uh, run by volunteers. Really imagine archaeological work happening around there uh, and as you say the the brewing i mean there's been a long brewing tradition uh, all around the county at both ends but perhaps the best uh, sort of long-standing tradition of it is uh, is over this end at dunbar where bellhaven brewery has been brewing for 300 years or more now um, and is still going strong still a, a, a internationally recognizable brand absolutely and i wonder how much uh, how many tourists bellhaven brewery brings to that 
part of the world and then they realise that there's so much more to see and do whilst they're there. Um, now there's a particularly interesting museum in North Berwick as well, the National Museum of Flight. Tell us why this is well worth a visit. Yeah, well, uh, flight the flight's a fantastic uh, location. It's uh, it's settled in the in in the countryside, as you say, on the on the the road to North Berwick, and uh, it's like you say, it's the National Museum of Flight. So it's the the place to go in Scotland if you if you're interested in in, in aviation. It, it's basically it's a, it's a it's an old military airfield uh, that's been converted into this uh, this fantastic um, resource. And uh, I, my my children certainly love going to see all of the range of aircraft that are there on the hangars. I enjoy seeing the uh, the architecture of the old uh, airfield itself. Um, but they've just uh, had these uh, big new hangars uh, developed. A lot of investment in the museum there, um, and they're packed full uh, with aircraft of all types uh, and, and all ages. Uh, and uh, really is a, a fantastic experience. But of course, the main thing is uh, if really wants to go to um, go to the National Museum of Flight because it's pretty much the only place around here where you can get to sit aboard the Concorde, uh, which is a rare wow. experience these days. Wonderful stuff. Well, it really does sound like something that everyone, every member of the family would would, would enjoy. So that sounds incredible. Uh, one thing that I'm asking each guest to do at the end of uh, every episode is to sum up why East Lothian is so special to them. And if I was to ask you that, and I am, I'm asking you this right now, what <laughs> would you say? Well, for me, as a historian, I think it's the fact that here in the in the county, wherever I go, I'm I'm surrounded by history. I can completely immerse myself in it. Uh, lots of different types, lots of different moods. Um, you can witness here in East Lothian the, some of the great events that uh, that shaped the Scottish nation. And uh, and you know, every time I drive to work, I'm following uh, the route. Uh, of uh, some army or other that has come this way to either victory or defeat. And the fact that you can look out your windows and see the same things that they saw, uh, that's what makes uh, this place special for me. Perfect answer. Aaron, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast. It's been really lovely to hear your pearls of, pearls of wisdom uh, about East Lothian. And uh, I'm sure everyone listening is uh, now eagerly waiting for their next visit. Thanks very much. Thanks for listening. You can head over to visit eastlothian.org to discover even more unique experiences right here within minutes from Edinburgh. And don't forget to subscribe and rate the podcast so more people can discover the true beauty of East Lothian. I'll see you next time.